I feel like I owe you guys a video since I said yesterday I would do it in the evening and then I was just coughing so much that I didn't think I could effectively do a video. So let's dive through some of these Ask Andy questions. Trish Jones says, how do I get someone to consider me for a lower job than my past? I am not finding director jobs, but would be willing to, uh, or be happy to work as an individual contributor. So I think the language that you use in your resume, Trish, would be really key on getting that opportunity. You have to understand what hiring managers are scared of. And having been a hiring manager, I know you can probably relate, but that they're scared that as soon as a director level role comes available, you will be one foot out the door. And so I think being able to address that you're there for a long-term opportunity, maybe in the cover letter, as well as to not play down your experience, but really use language that would be indicative of an individual contributor and would support your quest for that. If you're looking for it just because there aren't other available jobs, then what's your long, is it a bridge job or what's your long-term commitment to that? So I think the way you word your resume using words like led, managed, spearheaded may be more indicative of a role that is higher level as opposed to an individual contributor. So make sure the career story you're telling is that I'm available to work in an individual contributor role happily, but then you also have to take an honest evaluation of is this a long-term fit or a bridge job? And if it's a bridge job, that's just maybe a contract role would be better suited for that short-term assignment. And then the second part was, do I need to do different resumes for all the possible positions. For example, I manage QA, BA, RM, and PM. If I want to apply for a BA, do I take everything else off and change my title? Okay, so this is where we have that um, kind of test on resume content. Every single bullet point we have to ask, why do they care about this specific piece of information? Does it help them make an informed decision about me as a potential employee for this opportunity? So this is where I use the Microsoft Quick Parts to have you know, examples of core competencies, and then you can just kind of plug and play those. Once you get that set up, your customizing resume should be very, very quick. And so it doesn't necessarily take separate resumes, but I would set up the Microsoft Quick Parts, which I demoed in one of the videos here in the challenge, and definitely use that to, uh, to tailor your resume quickly. But I do think you have to ask yourself, if it's a BA role, how much of that QA experience comes in like user acceptance, acceptance testing or um, project management. Sometimes those roles are so integrated that you can tie it in, but you still want to paint a very clear picture of why you're the right person for this opportunity. And if you muddy the waters with too many alternate facts, then either they start to feel you're overqualified or then they don't understand how it translates into what they're going to ask you to do. And so while your intention may be to say, I actually can do that plus more, that plus more may be what's scaring people away. And then, um, all right. Thank you, Dr. Hollis. I appreciate you. Love seeing that PhD behind your name. All right. Edward, how do you suggest we can quickly customize your, our resume when applying for various jobs? Um, okay. So this is where I demoed the quick parts and the text plays. If you're using Microsoft Word inside of Google Chrome, you can use text plays. If not, Microsoft has quick parts. You can really tie those in where you're just selecting which bullet points you want. Ultimately, if you'll position your resume like I demoed um, earlier in the challenge with the core competencies and achievements at the top, all you need to change are those core competencies and achievements. The what you did, the task that you did, those don't change. I changed the order of those bullet points to you know, kind of target a position, but the task that you completed, those don't change. If you're looking at how do I tailor a resume, it's the core competency section. Tell them in the core competency section, they're asking for a specific skill. Your core competency is going to become that skill and then add the supporting evidence for what you did. If you program that into Microsoft Word, you're not having to reinvent the wheel. You can just select a quick parts that say, you know, oh, this, this one goes here and there, you can set that up and utilize that technology to streamline tailoring your resume. That way it's written, it's powerful, 
and you're not recreating that every time. Okay, so I would have kind of this master file using Microsoft Quick Parts to plug and play that information. All right, so hopefully Trish and John and Edward um, go back and watch that video on Quick Parts and see if that doesn't help with that. Okay. Anila, great question. What is the best way to present when you have been at one job for a long time? So this is, maybe you've had multiple roles so you could separate that out. So you might have um, that I worked at Maximize Your Job Search as, you know, and I'll put the total time that I was at Maximize Your Job Search. Under CEO, I would put the total time I was CEO. What if I started as a director so after I listed the bullet points for director, I would start a new, almost like a new job, but don't start over with like maximize your job search, just include the title and the dates that you held that title. So that shows vertical growth. So for you, where you were a senior specialist in includes inclusion and diversity at American Airlines. So in your, you have this DNI role that's a senior level role. What did you do before that? And was it at American Airlines? Break it down that way. So it shows vertical growth. It, you have great tenure, all of those things that can work in your advantage, but you want to spell it out in a way that you, they can see how you had this progressive career to get where you were, even though you didn't change companies, you were recognized for your outstanding achievements to grow within the organization. All right, Maya. Okay. So Maya, this is where um, you're, what I'm reading is that you're transitioning. And so my transitioners are some of my favorites because you guys work so hard to build something strong. And then maybe you're in an industry that was decimated by COVID-19, like retail or hospitality, those industries that were hit really hard transportation. And so when I look at the transferable skills, so what did I learn and where I was? that enables me to transcend verticals. So this is what we call crossing verticals. When I grew up in one area, I grew up vertically here, I'm going to cross over a vertical without starting at the bottom. And so this is where I apply what I've learned, what skills are transferable, customer service, um, troubleshooting, process improvement, project management. Some of those are very, very easy to transfer to a new industry. While I understand there with project management, that's a little touchier, like construction has very specific strategies as opposed to technology. But just think about what have you done in the roles that you were in and then transferring that into a new industry. And then your core competencies and achievements need to be targeted in not even what you feel best at, but in your most transferable skills. Okay, I hope that helps. Mila, how to get these keywords, tag crowd. So tag crowd's a great way. And then to use them wisely on a resume. I love how you phrase this. I'm not one for keywords just for the sake of keywords. There are practices out there that say um, that we just throw keywords in there. There are people who even what is called stuffing a resume and they'll put like the job description at the bottom of the resume in white text, or they'll put um, keywords at the bottom in white text. The ATS will parse that out as well as when I go and do a control F and do a search and find on your resume. When I look at, you know, human resources and I'm looking to see how many times it appears in your resume, all of a sudden it highlights this blank text. I'm going to dig deeper. It's easy to, uh, to find. So I'm not a fan of stepping resumes with keywords, but I do like using them strategically. So this is where when I look at the words that pop out in bold on keyword from a job description telling me, you know, what words are they repeating over and over? What words are bolded in the job description, underlined, um, they say in all caps, this is required. Anything like that, that I have, I want to speak to it and I'm going to put that in my core competency section and make sure you're using the same language they are. They call them customers, you call them customers. If you call them clients or employees, especially with HR, how are they referring to people? And then you match their language and then you put it everywhere it's applicable. If they're asking for work day, then as you're saying, I managed or I updated employee profiles, 
then add in using Workday. I managed day or I analyzed data retrieved from Workday to, you know, make data-driven decisions. And, you know, I, and I'm kind of shooting from the hip here, but you can implement those key words wherever they're relevant. Just sometimes it's adding supporting details to what you're already saying. Good, good question. I like that one. Kimberly Cook said, I don't know how to quantify on my resume. Okay, this is good. I see a lot of people chiming in. Sometimes we think quantify means that we have to add numerical values that we may or may not have access to. But I do want you to dig deeper into, as an LMS administrator, as a senior analyst, as a you know marketing and brand manager, what you do has to impact a business. So you are either an investment for the company or you're increasing revenue. When you look at your role, when if I take your role out of the equation, what does the company lose? Okay, which means this is not getting done if somebody in my role is not doing it. When I take that out, what was the loss? So if we then reverse that by adding this role back in, the value you add, the quantifiable me or results are what value you bring to the organization. And that may be that it improved operational efficiencies, that it enabled people to do their job and, and took a three-day process to a three-hour process or save the company X amount of dollars if you have that information. But if it eliminates waste, if it drives efficiencies, if it creates team collaboration, identifies knowledge gaps and streamlines the learning process. Think about how it impacts the business. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a dollar amount if you don't have that. When you add supporting details, it's giving the um, acknowledgement that you understand how your role impacts business. So be able to talk about it in a, in a way that you solved business problems by doing this and the result was. So did it result in developing teams that were able to grow within the organization, developing leaders? Did it um, champion diversity and inclusion? Did it um, reduce safety incidents because you were you know, training on safety? What did you train on and what was the measurable result of that? Okay, good, great question. Okay, John, let me know if you um, have any other questions on uh, quick parts, but I think that will help you tailor those resumes quickly. Uh, Susan, or Suzanne, sorry. Um, keywords can be everywhere in your resume. So when you're matching words to the job description, I really feel like it will help if you look at that job description as a first round interview. So if you take that job description and break it down into what is your experience with this bullet point, and then go to your resume and see if it answers that question. So how would you answer it in the interview? And does your resume speak to that? Does it give a good solid example of what your experience is with this job description? And if you keep your resume kind of tailored towards answering the questions uh, that are in the job description and then maybe a few other highlights, then I think that will help you tailor your resume, identify those keywords. But think about, you know, when you break it down into what is your experience with this bullet point? What is your experience with this technology? Then you go into your resume and you answer that as many times as applicable using, you know, creative keywords like, not or creative uh, verbs, I guess would be a better one. Um, so you use powerful action verbs, creative ways to describe what you did, and then really tie it in with which resulted in or which impacted business, which increased or decreased, you know, you can you tie that all in together. Should we only tailor in the statement and core competency are also? Okay, so Lynn, what I think uh, you're asking me here is should you tailor, like we have our professional summary, then we have our core competencies, and then we have our, you know, descriptions, our tasks that we did at the job. So the way we write resumes, we want to send those accomplishments up to the top. First thing you see, 
So we have this great, powerful summary that tells about you, tells about your educational background, why are you qualified to submit your resume? And then we have, here's what I've achieved in the past that supports that I'm qualified. And then we have the task that we've done that says, here's how long I've been working with this technology or doing this activity. So all of this is just supporting evidence that, you know, kind of streamlines. So here's my hierarchy of um, importance. So we've got our summary, which is an introduction, right? It's the first thing they are usually going to know about me. Then I have these core competencies and achievements that say, here's the problems that I solved in the past and what I feel like I can do for your company. And then we have supporting evidence of here's, you know, more about the day-to-day -day life of my roles and what I was tasked with. So if I look at tailoring all of that, it becomes overwhelming. I do like to put, starting at the bottom, I like to put the bullet points in the order that they're most important for the role. So sometimes it's just moving them around, but I wouldn't reword them. The core competency section, that absolutely, pick four to six good core competencies that explain why you're a good fit for the role you're applying for and use quick parts to kind of have those on standby and you can plug and play those without having to rewrite them. And then um, you can tailor that summary section because think about it, when you read that job description, think, okay, what is the most important thing about me that makes me qualified for this role? And then take that and insert that into the, the summary section, the top professional summary. And uh, I think that will help you kind of tailor your resume a little bit very quickly. All right, Tammy, let me know if that doesn't answer the question on keywords, but let me read this. How do you figure out which keywords to use to tailor your resume? How often do you add them ineffectively? Okay, let me know if the up above didn't answer that, um, but I put them everywhere they're applicable without saying, you know, um, my name's Andy Cook, I'm a resume writer, and I meet with clients as a resume writer to do resume writing and all of the resume writing stuff. You know, like we don't want to come across like that, but if we then let's say I include how I am a resume writer at Maximize Your Job Search and then go back to, so that's great for that, that one. I go back to Matrix. I wrote resumes at Matrix. Let's talk about that. And so we do it ev everywhere it's applicable, then using which technology that adds in that keyword um, resulting in um, and then you can use words like partnered with or collaborated with other departments to pull in those kind of keywords without sounding redundant, okay? Okay, so it shouldn't take you three hours per job post. It, it should not. Guys, I want you, I really want you tailoring your resume in 20 minutes or less. And um applying for should do five a day, right? So we do three by three right now, but I do recommend four to six to speed up a job search. But honestly, it should not take you three hours. Um, if it is, I wanna meet with you, please book an appointment because I wanna help. Um, how short is too short, Elizabeth? Um, really, I don't look at resume length like that. I look at how long does it take you to tell your story effectively? So can you do that in one page? Can you do it in two? Does it take five? Nobody honestly is going to read all of a five page resume, but if it's organized in the right way, it can, you can get away with it on a very technical or very senior resume. Um, I'm not one of those people who says you have to keep it two pages or less. You have to have 18 words per bullet point. It's not a haiku. We're not counting words or syllables. It's not a, um, an essay. It's just a, a really good way to tell your story. So I know a lot of experts out there teach um, very specific, specific strategies on, um, I know a lot of experts teach very specific strategies on how many words and we do kind of shoot for a, um, you know, just as a ballpark, if you're looking for you know, I would say not less than 600 words, not more than 1,200 on a, a normal resume. Executives can get away with about 1,500 words as opposed to, um, or and executives can get away with about 1,500 words and technical resumes can get away with 1,500 to 1,800 if they're being very specific on technologies that they used, okay? Krista said, I think track would be 
useful. I have also noticed people using it in there. Yes, I do see people using TechRoute in their LinkedIn banner. I'm not opposed to it. Um, there's other ones that I think are more powerful. I think Chris Cornell uh, demoed one and I actually liked it because he could change the colors. I thought that was a really good one. Let's see. Okay, Raj, um, let me know if that doesn't answer the question above and um, we'll go from there. So, all right, good. I love that Q&A. I hope that answered a bunch of questions for you. I'll get this video posted and we will have an amazing day. Congratulations on making it to day 12 of the challenge. Um, expect a call from me over the next couple of days to just talk about your experience. Talk to you later. Bye.